Well, did we say 22 was under investigation? Just searching back through the messages for that. May not be accessible anymore, so... Car anyway. 20 is under investigation for the end of the previous safety car. That's not a car that is at the moment in contention for a podium in LMP2 Pro-Am. Alex Quinn in the Algarve Pro car, he's sixth. Indeed. So, yes, it won't affect the top three in Pro-Am. Still waiting for what happens in now the last 10 minutes in LMP3. So it's 5.6 seconds, the advantage for Tom Dillman over Ben Hanley. Then Jochen Auto, you could take out of the mix, at least for a podium, and insert Paul Luc Chata as the next car. He's only 1.4 seconds behind anyway. Louis Delatraz could yet have a say as well, but the performance of AO by TF has faded of late, and Delatraz doesn't seem to have any weapons up his sleeve to fight back to PLC. I think that's the order in LMP3. Change there, white breaker check in the DKR engineering car. You can see him on the track here, has passed for position the ultimate car, which we think still needs to pit. Either way, this is swinging in DKR engineering's direction. Gilles Julian is the next and only other target for the DKR car, and he's five and a half seconds ahead, but we're under nine minutes to go now. This is the lead car in LMP3. The hands of impressive Gilles Julien. No further the, action on car 22. Well, I was, about, I was literally about to say, the one saving grace for 22 oh. might well have been... That who's cool that? Racing? It's the Cool Racing P3 car, is it not? So number it is. 17, Cedric Ultramare. An Ultramare spinning on his own. Yes, he did. It's not long out of the At pit Bose lane. At corner. So it's not going to be their day today. The, the one saving grace, I think, for, for Ben Hanley was that the absence of the word immediately in the race direction message. Car 28 immediately to the stewards in race control, and car 22 and car 3, it just says team managers to race control. It's the difference I can explain is immediately means you're getting no biscuits with your coffee. <laughs> you're not and getting, come to you're race not control means coffee. they're not going to put the really nice biscuits out. I see. Yeah, so the immediately means you're properly in hot water, and so it has proven for 28 Edex Sport and the current driver, Jot van Outer, 10 seconds to be added. And it was to the next pit stop, was it not? And there may well not be a next pit stop. They'll add it to the, so end, of it to the, they the end of the race. It will just be 10 seconds. It won't be 10 seconds plus anything. So it is now about, yep, finding whatever pace he's got and trying to stretch the gap to the cars behind, if he can do that. Uh, this deep in the race, that's going to be tough. The f sole remaining question here is what has Gail Julien managed to do in terms of fuel saving in that RLRM Sport car? Seven minutes to go. Does he still need fuel? I think he does. Now, leaving it very, very late, if that is the case. The same with the Ultimate car. Yeah, Ultimate running third. And are they just looking to roll the dice to not kiss goodbye to the some important championship points it is going to be a drive-through for the APR car number 20 of Alex Quinn we said that that was still being looked at anticipating the end of the full course yellow and one penalty point going to Alex Quinn for that indiscretion as well but it doesn't affect the LMP2 current pro-am positions yep here's Ben Hanley with just put a further lap on sure what car that was, but it's not concerning the top three. It's a vector car, I think, wasn't it? Vector 10, yes, it was. You're spot on. And that car being driven by Philippe Drugovic, down in 10th place in LMP2. There's a glimpse of the number three DKR engineering car, Andres Latour, but Jop van Aert in front, still third on the road, may well finish third on the road but will uh, cop a penalty. It's a bit of a lock-up there, actually, from Jot van Outer. He's probably been given the instruction to really hair his way now to the chequered flag to get as much of a gap on those behind as possible. Has to. It's his only available option at this stage. He has done exactly that, by the way. Uh, one bit of clarity, but as we see confirmation of that penalty for the 28. Um, the win in 2020 for the 55 was before Aaron Scott stepped away from professional motorsport, so this would be the first win in the European Le Mans series for the trio together of David Perel, uh, Matt Griffin and of course Duncan Cameron in the 55 and at the moment that gap is coming down, it's 7.2 seconds now 
but five minutes to go. The ah now have there been has there been a shake up in LMP2 Pro Am because the 83 car which was doing second. very well it was second well it's dropped considerably back to fourth What's now happened there? so it was always 29 leading that in the final yes. phase Richard Mille by TDS Dolly Jarvis and Matthias Goal have gone by yeah and the lap times well, it was a 148 last time around but maybe there's been a moment to spin it's very unlike Mathieu Vaxivier if that's the case yeah it hasn't been in the pit lane has it without us noticing no. it would have dropped more time than that if that was the case but 83 slipping back to fourth and promoting Jarvis and Viscal to second and third in Pro-Am side by side between Jot van Aerte and Ben Hanley and this is for second and third but not really but not really ben but will, agree will be told I'm sure to let him go and then stick with him. Yeah, OK. Fair enough. Just, just get on the back of uh, Jot van Aerte to make sure now he doesn't get 10 seconds further down the road. And Hanley's going to be in conservation mode Absolutely. now. Both on fuel and on tyres. Well, he's all of a sudden, he's under attack from Paul at Chatan. Well, this really does matter now, all this of a sudden. absolutely does. So that's the difficulty in reining things back to, say, 90% of your true pace you can sometimes get more out of the rhythm than you intended. And Paul Lipschatter sniffing a podium here. Absolutely and potentially right. a second. I mean, if you can get ahead of Hanley, Se then that'll be a second place finish. It will finish. be second place, that's the point. And I think he's going to do it, and do it reasonably easily here. So, ben. is this more of an issue for Ben Hanley rather than allowing Jot van Aert it through? He's got no reply Again, to is Paul Lipschatter. Is it tires? Is it the fact that we're just down to the point where these tyres are falling off that performance cliff with three minutes to go. I've not seen, by the way, despite the portents of doom from numbers of people up and down the pit lane, a single tyre failure. No. So that's great stuff from both Goodyear and Michelin and great tyre management as well for the teams and the drivers. Under three minutes to go now. In Ten the seconds of the gap, Tom Dillman to Jan van Utrecht. In the last pit stop, Ben Hanley took a minute and seven seconds. That was probably some fuel, and I'm going to say one, two two one, tires. Maybe one or two? Yeah. Whereas Paul Chatin spent six further seconds in pit lane, but he can't do two more tires no, in that I space think of that's time. a definite two, two tire stop. Ben, I wonder if he just tapped up the front left. Maybe, it, maybe they only did one. I mean, you can change two tires at once, though, yes. can't you? So. It's, it's four that takes double the time. There's two minutes here. And looking he's going to lose that to Delatraz if he's not careful. Delatraz very, very wide through turn four. But Ben Hanley doesn't have the speed either to match Louis Delatraz. And Delatraz hasn't been on his game, or certainly the car's not been right there today, despite a terrific performance in the equivalent meeting last year from the Swiss. But he may get a very good run down the Mistral straight this time on the British driver for United Order Sports. He's going to pull out of the slipstream. We've got just over 90 seconds of the race to go, and this is going to be a place change again for Ben Hanley to slip back to fifth position and give Louis Delatraz the, the, the place and the space into senior corner. Disaster for GR Racing. It's a drive-through penalty for David Rigon for anticipating the end of the full course. show that is going to drop that car off the podium. It looks like it's going to be racing Spirit Le Mans going to the podium here. Meantime, the gap in LMGT3 still just under seven seconds. We're in the final minute in three, two, one seconds. Where is the race leader on track? And I will say, if RLRM Sport, as the LMP3 leaders are planning a pit stop, <laughs> they're running far too deep into the race to do it now, so clearly they think they can get to the end in car number 15. Here comes the GR Racing Ferrari then to take that penalty at the last possible moment. It's 15, 29 and 49 seconds. The race leader is heading into turns three, four and five now on the final lap. So Tom Dillman at Virage du Comp. Sat Bohm and the kink at seven to take him onto the Lindois de Mistral for the final time. And a big, big advantage of 11.
0.3 seconds. Mirror hanging off the, the left side of that car. You're right as we're looking at it. So that has seen Valentina Huzklo through into third place. Michelle Gatting, by the way, still with him. The clock expires now. So it will be when the 43 car crosses the line. Tom Dillman, what a magnificent run he's got. And by the way, with the drop-off in pace at the moment from Ben Hanley, he risks losing a place to, to Jot Van Utert at this point. Yes, uh, Delatrans has got by. And yet the, the danger is he allowed Paul Luch uh, he allowed Jot Van Utert through, but then couldn't stay on the tail of the Dutchman and has allowed a number of LMP2 cars through as well. But it could have been an absolutely incredible result for Inter-Europol competition. In the end, they will still be very happy. They had to kiss goodbye to the race lead for one of their cars, but the other one was sitting pretty in second. It inherited the race lead and the race win of the 2024 four hours of Lucas Delay. It's Sebastian Alvarez, it's Vlad Lomko, and it's Tom Dillman who are victorious here in the south of France in LMP2. Coming home for the first victory for this trio. Together, the 55 car Spirit of Race take the win in LMGT3 after a titanic battle up and down the order. And it's going to be Richard Mill by TDS, the 29 car, Matthias Besch, bringing home this car for an LMP2 Pro Am win. And RRM Sports look like pulling off the most unlikely win in LMP3, where is that car? They've still got half a lap to do they're on the Mistral straight but well done indeed to Greg Sose and Rodrigo Sales in the Richard Mille by TDS racing car to win LMP2 Pro-Am and we still don't know what happened to the number 83 car to take it off the podium but Proton will finish in second place with the number 77 car after a great performance yesterday in qualifying for Giorgio Roda Rene Binder and Bent Viscal brings the 77 to the line still uh, in the final sector is the LMP3 leader just heading out of Bandol corner now and Galaban. So two more corners to secure it for RLRM Sport. And it look, it's looking like a second place finish for DKR Engineering and current driver Wyatt Brickercheck. Here they are, car 15 then, RLRM Sport and Gael Julien driving on fresh air, Unreal. it seems. But he Unreal. got it to the finish. Uh, a very impressive guy both in the media centre yesterday but also more importantly in qualifying on Saturday and he has helped them convert that into a much deserved race win Michael Jensen, Nick Adcock and Gail Julian. Staggering and that, that he must have been driving in carpet slippers uh, honestly that it, it had to have been a massive fuel save from Gail Julian.